What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully it's not the first time watching one of my videos, but in case it is, I am a third year medical student studying King's College London and today I have a really, really cool day for you guys. Um, it's currently around 7pm and I'm going on my first night shift ever at medical school. I'm so, so excited. It's a night shift in psychiatry and the reason why I'm in bed right now is because, as I said, it's 7pm so I'm going to take a huge nap. This morning I was on my normal psychiatry placement in the community centre from 9am uh, to 5pm. I'm going to try sleep an hour or so and then head back to the hospital for my night shift in psychiatry. But for now, I'm going to put a one hour timer, head to bed, so I'll speak to you guys in the next shot. All right, so I'm all ready and dressed to go now, and I'll see you guys at the hospital. I'm finally at the hospital and I want to tell you guys quickly about where I'm at. So this is the Maudsley Hospital, right next to King's College Hospital over there. Um, and Maudsley Hospital is one of the most infamous hospitals in the world for psychiatry. It's actually, I think it's the most, I think it's the oldest hospital for psychiatry in the entire world. It's very infamous and it's, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm really looking forward to this shift. So I'm gonna go in, meet my doctor who I'll be shadowing for tonight and I'll catch you guys up very soon. All right, so our shift started at 9 p.m. and for the first 15 minutes, we received the handover from the day doctor who gave us all of the patients and all of the remaining jobs to do on that shift. From quarter past nine till about 10 p.m., I was helping out my doctor to do a few of her tasks that she was given from the day doctor. This included chasing up some blood results for the patients, reading up some patients' notes as well. There were a few patients that were coming in that we were expecting to be admitted, so we had to make sure that we know a bit about these patients. At around 10 p.m., we then received an urgent call from one of the consultants who was concerned that one of the patients was suffering from lithium toxicity. She was on lithium to treat one of her mental illnesses, but the consultant believed that the patient had too much lithium in her system. So the doctor I was working with asked me to look up the symptoms of lithium toxicity, as well as the ECG changes that may occur on lithium toxicity. The plan was to go and review this patient and assess her for any clinical signs of lithium toxicity, as well as take an ECG and a blood test. So we ran over to the ward and went to see the patient. She was quite agitated so we didn't manage to get a proper ECG off her but we did manage to get some blood. I then had to run over and deliver these bloods myself which is what you're going to see in the next clip. So lithium is supposed to treat patients who are manic or who have a bipolar disorder and it's quite a toxic drug. So I have her bloods in my hand right now and I'm on porter duty so I need to go to the porters. Well the porters are actually busy so I have to go all the way to King's College Hospital. I say all the way, it's across the road. But I need, to go to, I need to go over to the lab, drop off these bloods and head back to the uh, hospital to go and find uh, my doctor. Uh, it's almost midnight now, so safe to say I've never been out this late in the hospital. Uh, but it is quite fun. Um, I'm very, very tired, as you can probably tell. Um, but yeah, let's get these bloods dropped off and then head back and find my, cons uh, my psychiatrist. Right, so over there behind me, as you can see over there, that's our school of medicine. Uh, where I was yesterday for placements and it's coming up to like half 12 in the night. The hospital's completely empty and no one's here. It is really strange to be here at this time, but we've got the buds done. So the patient should be all right, hopefully. And I'm gonna head back and find my psychiatrist. I should say it was an absolute uh, mission trying to find where to drop off, the, drop off the bloods. Like obviously I'm not a porter, so finding, finding the lab was really, really hard, but we got it done. Right, so Maudsley is over there. That's literally how close it is. King's College is right there behind me. And Maudsley is literally over there. All right, so I'm back in the doctor's mess because I wanted to drop the ECG for the last patient we saw. So as I said, we took uh, two things. One was a blood test from the patient. The second was uh, an ECG. Um, and it was actually really difficult because 
Uh, as we said, the patient probably had lithium toxicity, so it's quite difficult to manage her. She was confused, a bit drowsy, uh, wasn't able to actually talk to us, so it was a bit tricky, but we managed to get blood out. Didn't manage to get a good ECG, but we got one anyways. And I thought I'd show you guys the mess, the doctor's mess and where we're at now. So over here behind me is uh, the door. And then as you come in, uh, let me just turn around actually. Yeah, so we have um, a few fridges over there. Nice little TV here as well. Over there is where all the doctors work. So it's where we sat earlier on when I was typing out the patient notes and stuff like that. Uh, and here's a few sofas. So one and two sofas. Um, to be honest with you, I probably will uh, find a place on this sofa to have a nap. <laughs> Got a little cover here ready for me as well. So um, what time is it? Let's have a look. So it's currently quarter past 12 now. Um, I just phoned up my uh, psychiatrist and she's going to another ward. So the plan is to go over to the ward, uh, meet her there. I'm a bit tired, but I'm gonna grab my coffee as well. The plan is to meet her at the next ward. Uh, I'm really excited to see what else is coming. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what patient we're going to see next, so it should be quite exciting. So I'll see you guys in the next shot. I got back from the hospital at around midnight where I went to find the doctor who I was working with. When I found her, she was being bleeped from one of the wards because one of the patients got into a fight. So the doctor was really busy, so she sent me over to go and assess the patient very briefly to make sure that she was okay. That took around 15 minutes and brought us to quarter past 12, where we were called to assess one of the new patients that had just come in and was brought in by the police under the Mental Health Act. This patient unfortunately tried to take their life away, and because of that, the police were able to detain them against their will and for their own safety. After assessing this patient, we then moved on to assess another patient who needed a seclusion review. A seclusion review is where one of the patients who are in the seclusion room needs to be reviewed every couple of hours by a doctor to make sure that they are physically and mentally well. It's one of the rooms that you hear about where the patient doesn't really have much inside the room to prevent them from harming themselves or anyone else. There's literally only a bed in that room, so we went in and reviewed that patient. After all of this, that's around half one, we then spent the next half an hour back in the doctor's mess. Again, I was helping the doctor out with a few of her jobs. This included calling up the nurses on the phone to see how urgent the patient needs to be seen. I had to review medications as well. 20 milligrams, okay, perfect. So PRN is promethazine and diazepam. What about his normal medication? I also had to look up some of the patients who had just arrived on the system to brief the doctor before going to see them. And lastly, the doctor asked me to write up a few patient notes for the patients that had just been seen. All right, quick uh, top up and coffee before I head out to the uh, back to the wards. This brought us around two o'clock in the morning. This time again, we received an emergency call on the doctor's belief to go and assess one of the new patients who was being brought in by the police. This patient was acutely unwell. She was quite aggressive as well and needed to be reviewed by a doctor. She wasn't very compliant and wasn't really working with us, so it took around an hour and a half to two hours to deal with this patient. We gave this patient some medication as well to help her calm down, when eventually she did calm down and we were able to finish off the review and head back to the doctor's mess. Right, so it's about 10 past four in the morning and I want to call it night here, guys. I'm so, so tired. I started at 9 a.m. this morning, as I said. Um, the doctor I'm working with is carrying on until 9 a.m. But yeah, I'm gonna call it a night. <laughs> I saw some crazy stuff tonight. Craziest stuff I've seen in my life. Really, really like eye-opening, life-changing things. <laughs> Hopefully bus is 24 hours so I can get the bus home. Um, but yeah, I'll catch you guys up. It's been an amazing shift. I'll tell you all about it when I go home. So I'll see you guys in the next shot. <sighs> all right, so I'm finally back home. It's about five in the morning. Um, before I head to bed, I wrote down a few things on the bus that I wanted to talk to you guys about right before I finish the vlog. So the first thing I want to say is that it's been an absolute privilege to be able to like go onto this shift and see all the things I saw tonight. It's an absolute privilege. This week uh, in medicine in general, I've honestly seen patients and people and human beings at their absolute worst. I've been there to diagnose patients with breast cancer. I've seen people go psychotic. I've seen patients cry in front of me, uh, going through anxiety, depression, suicide. But, you know, having said all of these things, it's been an absolute pleasure to be able to experience this and to be there when patients want to share their deepest secrets with you. It's an absolute privilege to be able to help people in this way and to be there when people are going through what might possibly be the hardest part of their entire life. The second thing that I wanted to say is that today is probably the first day, one of the first days ever, where I felt like an actual doctor. Normally on my clinical placements, obviously we do work with doctors, but there are normally enough doctors on the wards where we don't actually get to do as much as I did today. The doctor I was working with was the only doctor in the entire hospital looking after over 540 patients. So her and I were the only medics in the whole entire hospital and she was extremely busy. It was an on-call shift, so she had so much work to do, which meant that I could actually come in and help her. I was actually able to do the stuff that I'll be doing when I finally graduate and become a doctor in just over two years. I've honestly learned the most about medicine when I volunteer my own time as well. 
Um, as you guys know, in one of my last videos, I delivered two babies on the same exact day, and now I had a whole shift in psychiatry. Both of those times I've actually been in the hospital were out of my own decision. They weren't compulsory. I wasn't there to get a signature, just to say that I've been there. And doctors actually realize this. When doctors see that you've actually volunteered your own time to be there and that you actually want to learn, that's honestly when they let you do the most and teach you the absolute most. So these times of medicine have generally been when I've learned the most about being a doctor. But those are the last few points I want to tell you guys. It's been an absolute pleasure, as I said, to have been able to share these special moments in these people's lives. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe as well. I'm gonna jump in my bed because I'm absolutely dead. I've been dreaming about it for the last hour, so I can't wait. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.